Family Theater presents Robert Stack and Cecil Kellaway. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Big One, starring Cecil Kellaway. And now, here is your host, Robert Stack. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Big One, starring Cecil Kellaway as Daniel. Some of my well-meaning friends have been after me for a long time now to get up here on the radio and tell my story, the story of the big one. But I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. You see, it's like this. It's what you might call a quaint little story about the Irish. And if there's one thing I dislike more than another, it's a quaint little story about the Irish. <laughs> I'm full right up to here with them. And you know why? They're always full of terrible misrepresentations. People wearing green hats, little chaleles, and saying sure and bigara and the like. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> While well, there's a full symphony orchestra trying to get your sympathy by playing background music that sounds like quaint little Irish tunes being played on a concertina, like this. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 stop it. That, that, that's enough. Do you see what I mean? You can understand why a man uh, wouldn't want to contribute to such foolishness. But nonetheless, the story needs telling if I'm going to get these well-meaning friends off my neck. So if you don't mind, I'd like you to listen. Don't worry. I'll stay clear of all the foolishness. I'll give you the facts, just the plain facts, through the magic of radio. Little magic music, please. Thank you. <laughs> Through the magic of radio, I'd like to take you back to my little farm just outside the beautiful city of sunshine, Dungarvan, jewel of the Emerald Isle and pride of County Waterford. <laughs> I well remember the day it all started, the 21st of June, 1921. I remember the morning mist had just risen from the meadow and I was finishing the milking and on my way out from the barn when I ran into McInnes, my brother-in-law. Of course, he wasn't my brother-in-law then. Morning, Daniel O'Shiel. You're trespassing, McInnes. I want to talk to you. That's too bad. I want to talk to you about your sister. What about my sister? Uh, can I come in? Yeah, all right. Good morning, Patrick. Have you... Uh, not yet, my love. My love? What's this? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, uh... uh may... May I sit down? You'll stand on your head for all I care. What's this all about? Uh, O'Shiel... <clears throat> O'Shiel, I'm going to marry your sister. What? I know I'm not from County Waterford, and there may be someone here as good. But she'll find no better man. Martha, you mean to tell me that she's going to marry a man from County Cork? I can't help it, Daniel. I love him. Impossibly. And what's wrong with Cork? What's wrong with it? <laughs> well, in the first place, it's not Waterford. And in the second place, you come from there. What's wrong with Cork? <laughs> Why, you ignorant Corko. None of you have enough sense to come in out of the rain. You aren't worth the rope that it takes to hang the lot of your worthless bones. Now, Dan. Here, if... here, now, Daniel O'Shiel. Here, here, now, Daniel O'Shiel. Did you hear that? It's not the way for a man to talk. Here, here, now, Daniel O'Shiel. 
Oh, can it be that you aren't a man at all at all, but a suit of clothes stuffed like the one? Oh, oh, stuffed suit, is it? No, rather, I made a stuffed shirt. Oh, stuffed shirt! Please, now, Patrick and Daniel. Am I to understand you don't approve of my marrying your sister? Are you to understand, you thick-headed ape? I'll see you waiting in the finish till your hat floats first. Oh, you're fixing to anger me, old sheer. I was beginning to wonder if your skin was as thick as your head seems to be. Would you like to step outside, O'Sheel? Yes, that I would, McInnes, that no. I would. No, now stop it. You've gone far enough. I'll not have any fighting within the family. But he's not in the family. He will be whether you like it or not, Daniel. But this is between us men, my love. Not anymore, it isn't. But how are we going to settle this and this? You'll go soak your head in the pump, Daniel O'Sheel. When you've got your temper down, then maybe we'll settle it. And talk about my dowry. Dowry? A dowry. How can Patrick and I move to America and make our fortune without a dowry to pay for the trip? <laughs> they want to go to America, so they'll need a dowry. Oh, oh, this is too much, too much. It's the custom, Daniel. He'll pay half. That I will. Come outside, McInnes. It's a pleasure. Stay where you are, Patrick. And, Daniel, you go outside till you've cooled off. <laughs> throwing me out of my own house. I'm throwing you out till you've cooled your temper. Go soak your head now. Oh, he's going to soak his head. I'll help him. He'll stay here. He's had to do it often enough without your help. Mm. Well, I tried. All right, well, we'll settle it later. I'm going to marry. I'm going to marry your sister, he says. <laughs> Just like that. <sighs> what does she say? I love him, she says. He's some cock, but I love him. And then when I try to reason with him, go soak your head in the pump, she says. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do it. I'll do it, but I'm going back in there, and I'm going to loosen every tooth in his head. That's what I'm going to do. Ooh. Oof, the water's as cold as charity. It is when I looked up from the pump that I saw him. The big one. Four and a half feet tall he was. He was standing there at the end of the watering trough, watching me. Then after a second, he reached over and picked up the towel off the pump handle and handed it to me. Looks like pretty good water. Huh? I say it looks like pretty good water. I, I suppose it is, uh, if you like water. Who are, who are you? Little. That I can see. I mean, my name's Little. Spud Little. You mind if I have a cup? Help yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Where are you from, Mr. Little? I lived, um... I lived here all my life. Oh, my, that's good. That's real good. All your life? What part of Dungavan? Right here on this farm. <laughs> Joke, eh? Yeah, it's funny I haven't seen you before. I'll have just a little more, if you don't mind. I say, it's funny I haven't seen you before. And not funny at all? Leprechaun, you know. Oh. Oh, my. Excellent water. It's the finest of the... Leprechaun? Mm-hmm. Did you see a leprechaun? Oh, they don't exist. What did you take me for? A great big stupid ox. <laughs> Which is what you're acting like. Well, prove that you're a leprechaun. <laughs> prove it? That's what I said. All right. But remember, uh, it was your idea. <laughs> yeah. I should never have said that. Because, you see, a leprechaun's special talent is finding hidden springs, running water under the ground. And the two of us spent the morning wandering over the farm, him walking ahead of me all crooked over like a blackthorn stick, listening to the ground. Four times he stopped and pointed out a spot on the ground. And four times I dug down three or four feet and found just what he said I'd find. Hidden springs. Delicious. Now let's try over there in the grove. No. No, I, I believe you. You're a leprechaun, all right. You're a big one, but I, I believe you. I've turned all the earth I'm fed to. Look now, I, I've even bent the spade. Oh, oh sure, now. I can go on for hours. Well, I can't. I've done all the work I can. I, I think we'd better be getting back. We'll miss the new meal. As you say. Oh. Oh. Oh, we're 
<laughs> Is there something wrong? I've strained my back. Oh, you strained your back? Well, just put your arm over my shoulder. I'll help you. There, that's it. You know, if you've come to plague me, Spud Little, I think you know how to set about it. Here to help, I am. Help? <laughs> of course, when a man's in trouble, he can't get himself out of. That's when we show up. What kind of trouble do you think I'm in? I know. I was listening at the window. Oh, you know, then. A terrible thing. She wants to marry that Matinus Martha does. From County Cork. It's a good thing I'm here. You'd have, have things in a terrible mess. <laughs> have you got anything in mind? I have. Of course, you'll have to tell them it's your idea. Just introduce me as an old friend or something. That I will. All right, then. Listen. They want to go to America after they get married. So you tell them. Now, let me get this plan of yours straight. You're not only going to pay for the trip, but you're going with us. Is that right? That's right. And you're not against us getting married anymore. That's right. <laughs> I'd like to earn a fortune, too. All right. Now, what's the trick, Daniel? Trick? That's all trick. That's a bunch of malarkey. What is it? I ask only one thing in return. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought so. Will you hear me out before you start getting ahead of yourself? What are you asking, Daniel? Well, as your plans now stand, you're going to be married and move to America. And then, then you make your fortune. Right? Right. Well, all I ask is that if you can make your fortune before you get married... Daniel? You see, McInnes, I'm only thinking of the comfort and safety of my sister. Well, it sounds right enough. What's the trick? Trick? Yes, what is it? Uh, well... Out with it. Well, if you haven't made your fortune in a reasonable amount of time, we'll call the wedding off. I don't like uh, it. No, no, wait a minute, my love. What would you call a reasonable amount of time, O'Shiel? Eh? Oh, uh, uh, two months. Make it four. Four? What do you think, Spud Little? Make it six. We know, don't we? Then <laughs> <laughs> six it is. Ah, it's a deal, O'Shiel. Six months. That's fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you got the short straw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> I have it on very good authority that the streets... The streets in America are paved with gold. <laughs> <laughs> gold? That was the first time I thought Spud Little had double-crossed me. But I didn't think so for long, because, you see, when we got to New York, we found that the streets were not paved with gold. In fact, they weren't even paved with brass. So west we went. We all got on the train at New York Station, and after considerable traveling, we came to a little frontier town called Pittsburgh. Yes, yes, I think that was the name of it. It was there McInnes decided that fortune was waiting for him. We all applied for work at the Boston Colliery. Well, what have we here? What have we here? We're the new men. That I can see. But I wasn't expecting two and a half of you. And a half. I take that as a dirty slam. Say it again and I'll knock you down. You'll what? Come now, dear. Come, come now, dear. Well, show us where we've got to work. That's what you're here for, isn't it? A mite more than that. I'm what you might call your foreman. And what might your country be? This one? America? A native? Oh, same thing. I've been here a year. If you mean where did I come from, tis Ireland. Oh, northern, I'll bet. County Kerry, and I'm thinking you've got a lot too much lip. Pipsqueak. Pipsqueak. Let me ask you. Put me down, McInnes. Oh, oh, ah, go ahead. Set the little tight down. All right. <laughs> Anything you say. Oh. Tight, you <laughs> say. Oh, no, no, no. no, no that's not it. No, no. no, no. Let me be oh, 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 him off. I've got to go. Like yeah. a demon from Hades, he is. No, Waterford. Oh. Spud and me are both from County Waterford. And I'm from Cork. Oh, he sure don't fight like a natural man. Well, in a manner of speaking, he isn't. Oh, no. Now, let me get this straight. 
The three of you are together. To the end, you mountain of blubber. <laughs> Waterford and Cork, eh? <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Come on, I'll show you foreigners where to work. <laughs> And so it turns out, ma'am, that this big ox has got no sense of humor. Oh, what a pity, that poor man. Yeah, he's got us working in the deepest, darkest, wettest hole in the whole dirty coal oh. mine. Yeah, and the worst possible company, I might add. True, the three of us are working together. And it's all your fault, McInnes, if you hadn't set him down. My fault? You'd begrudge a man the chance to defend his honor? You know, leprechauns were supposed to have any honor. What's that you say? I said, uh, would you have another glass of water? It's a good idea. I think I will. I think, Spud Little, that old Sheel is the kind of a man to begrudge others their due. It would appear so. You're asking for trouble again, McGinnis. Now that'll do. We've troubles enough, and there are other things to think about, Daniel. I want you to go do a little shopping for me while I'm learning how to work that big coal-burning thingamajig in the kitchen. Shopping? Yeah. It's not a thingamajig, my love. They call it a stove. I'll help you with it. You just stay where you are and enjoy your pipe. <laughs> As you say, my love. What are you want to know is, why can't McInnes do the shopping? Like you said, Daniel O'Sheel, I'm not a member of the family yet. Well... Everything went along smoothly for a couple of months, and we were all making good money. More than ever we'd made in the old country. But the food prices being what they were, it was pretty close to impossible for McInnes to save any money. Why, a knot of cabbage no bigger than your head cost the better part of a nickel. And you couldn't get a pound of ham for less than a dime anywhere. So it looked to me like McInnes wouldn't be making his fortune in the time that was left. At least that's what I thought. Till the second time the leprechaun Spud Little double-crossed me. I was just coming back from the elevators when... What's going on here? Nothing. That's what I mean. Why aren't you cutting coal? Because the vein's about to run out. Oh, about to run out? And tell me, little one, how would you be knowing what it's about to do? And where's the other fellow? Oh, what's his name? Oh, she? Somebody want me. Ah, your friends seem to think this coal mine's almost out of coal, so there's no use in cutting anymore. That's right, Delia. The vein's about to run out. He said it again. Is one of you going to work that drill? No, one of us isn't. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll work it. Uh, no, no, no. Don't do it, Dan. Uh, uh, the lip, I, I mean Spud here, thinks she'll hit water. Oh. Oh, well, on second thought, see... I, I don't think I feel like it just now. Oh, so one of you's a big leprechaun that can hear running water through stone. Ha! We'll hit water, will we? Give me that thing. No, no, no don't do it. Yes. You will flood the hole. Can we stop him, will you? Stop him. Oh. Ain't that beautiful? Oh, I bet this turns it. Well, can you beat that? If you mean to outrun it, I'm all for trying. You just ran into the bottom of a pretty good-sized spring. <laughs> and, of course, Wasson was for keeping the whole thing quiet. Oh, I should think he would. But I'm thinking it's a little hard to keep the floating at the whole level a secret. And all this is why Mr. Bostwick himself gave you all a raise in pay? It is. And I think it's no more than we deserve. <laughs> ah, it won't be long now, my oh. love. I'd like to have a word with you, Spud Little, outside. If you like, then. Well, aren't you having any dessert? I'll be obliged if you'll hold mine for a few minutes, ma'am. Daniel? I don't want any. What are you having for dessert? Blueberry pie. Oh, I'll be back. Uh, what is it, Daniel? I have a feeling you're working against me, Spud Little. Oh, working against you? Me? Yeah, you, you told McInnes you were a leprechaun. And you told him about the water. Well, you weren't there, I had to. You saw what happened. I saw. But he's got a raise out of it, a big one. Near three dollars a week. Sit down for a minute, Daniel. I don't feel like sitting Stand down. Stand, if you will, then. But listen... You got a raise, too, now, didn't you? I did. We all did. 
But now I stand a chance of losing the bet with him. What if you do? What if I do? You're both a long way from Cork and Waterford now. You've got no excuse to be against him. No, no. A bargain's a bargain, isn't it? Agreed, yes. Then another thing is too cocky. Maybe if he wasn't so cocksure about winning. You no, know, by thunder, I want you to promise me that you won't warn him about anything again. Are you sure that's what you want? I'm sure. It's a promise, then. But you'll pay for your bullishness if you're not careful. It was about four months later. I remember because McGuinness's time was almost up and he still hadn't made his fortune. As I said, about four months, and I was sure the leprechaun had double-crossed me. He kept his word, but it almost scared the daylights out of me. I remember we were working on a siding. McInnes was cutting coal, and I was loading into the car when I noticed Spud Little looking up at the top of the tunnel. There was a good-sized crack for me. He was just about to shout when... Look out! Get the car! Keep in! You wonder we were not all dead. Well, maybe we are. Hmm? I don't feel dead. It may be only a matter of time. Take a look at that. Oh, it looks like it's sealed up all right. Wait. Look. Isn't that a hole? A hole? Where? Up there. Near the top of the heap. Looks to me like it might be. Or does it go all the way through? I don't know. Try shouting. You might as well. Hello! Hello out there! Spud, move in a little ways if you can, and see if you can hear anything. Everybody in there! Did I hear something? You did. Hello, who wants to know? Watson, are you all right? Yes, we're all right. What did he say? I'll tell you if he says anything good. Why don't you come out the other way? The other way. Well, <laughs> what are you doing? He's gone he's, mad. No, I'm not. What? I'm just stuffing my coat in this shaft. That's Wasson out there. Says we're in a bad way. If he gets the last laugh, at least we won't have to hear it. In a bad way? As if we needed him to tell us. Oh, boys, we might as well sit down and wait for the sounds of the shovels or the beating of angels' wings. Hmm. It's strange. I don't see it. You don't see what? My whole life passing before my eyes. You're supposed to, you know, so I've heard. Uh, this is no way to go, I'm thinking. Poor, poor Martha O'Sheel. All alone in the world now. Uh, I should be with her. Oh, that's right. Or the man she loves. Uh, poor, poor little Martha. I did wrong, McInnes. I shouldn't have tried to keep you apart. She threw you from cock. But I suppose you could have lived that down if you lived long enough. Oh, if he lives long. Oh, grim humor, O'Shiel. And I'm surprised at you. No, 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 that isn't what I meant. What I meant to say was I'm sorry that he made the bet. Just for cleaning up the record, why don't you call off that bet of yours before, oh, before the grim reaper starts his work? I'd be glad to do it. I'll add this, McInnes. I'd be glad to have you for a brother-in-law. Even if you do come from Cork, you're a brave man, Patrick. And I'd be proud to have you for a brother-in-law. For like it says on the old coat of arms, the McInneses are brothers to the brave. Oh, well, come on, let's go home. Huh? We were cutting from a siding. There's an elevator at the other end of the shaft. Then we are dying. Well, you've tricked me. And me! Sure, like I told you both. We leprechauns come to help people in trouble. Well, I've been working for poor, poor little Martha. Of course, that was a long time ago. In fact, I've been an uncle seven times since then. And everything's worked out for the best, in spite of McInnes being a corpsman. <laughs> and as for the big one, Spud Little, 
I get cards from him now and then. In the last one, he said that he, he was doing business in the Spearhead Springs Water Company. Owns it himself, he does. Somewhere in California, I think. In a city called Glendale, in County Los Angeles. He's doing fine. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Oh, no, wait a minute, Mr. O'Zimmerman. Like I told you at the beginning, that's what I was trying to avoid. Now, let's have a little final music with hair on its chest. Like a few bars from uh, John Philip Bosus, say. That's the way to finish. <laughs> This is Robert Stack again. Come Labor Day, come school days. And for youth, from primary school to the university, and for parents as well, the school year is definitely in. We call all this actual going to school to learn formal education. Formal education is a blessing so great that we must never underestimate its value. We reverence it and thank God for it. And thank God that we live in a country where it is so widespread and obtainable. I hope it won't sound preachy to put in a word for informal education and what that means. It comes by chance and fortune. It is gained outside of school, in the marketplace, in the street, in groups and in the private sessions of thought which each one of us sometimes has with himself. But the home is a university as well as the grammar school of informal education. The home and the family. And no home is too poor, no home too overdressed with wealth and fortune to have God as a teacher. The family, rich or poor, which gathers together to ask the guidance of God and his instruction in the basic and ultimate values of life is a unique school. We are all continuously the learners. And one important chapter of learning which we can master is that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Big One, starring Cecil Kellaway. Robert Stack was your host. Others in our cast were Howard McNear, Joyce McCluskey, Marvin Miller, and Tudor Owen. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is George Crowell expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present the Fable of the Perfect Princess, starring Jean Lockhart, Kathleen Crowley, Rita Johnson, and Claude Aikens. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.